The assembly will hear an address by Her Excellency Dulce Rodriguez Gomez, Vice President of the Republic of Venezuela. May I request protocol to escort Her Excellency? I have, I have great pleasure in welcoming Vice President of the Republic of the Bolivian Republic of Venezuela and invite her to address the assembly. Madam Vice President. Muy buenas tardes. A very good afternoon to the distinguished General Assembly of the United Nations Organization. Respectful greetings to the President of the General Assembly and greetings too to all the heads of delegation, men and women, who are in the sacred hall, a hall, a hall that is sacred for international law. I come on behalf of the only Venezuela, dignified Venezuela, brave Venezuela, she who kneels to no foreign power, no imperial power. I bring greetings from uh, President uh, Nicolás Maduro and the Venezuelan people to this General Assembly. It is a Bolivarian greeting and also in the spirit uh, of our Commander Hugo Chávez Frias. I come with a purpose of sharing good news of about the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. The first uh, is that Venezuela is at peace. To this bore first-hand witness the 120 delegations which recently participated in the non-aligned country summit in Caracas. This, despite the year, uh, the, the war rather, that powerful communications uh, transnationals have uh, unleashed uh, to discredit uh, the Bolivarian Republic. Despite uh, the attempted coup d'etats of extremist sectors of uh, the uh, Venezuelan uh, public uh, uh, political sector, despite uh, attempts to assassinate uh, the whole high command, military and political, of the state of Venezuela, as well as ambassadors accredited in Venezuela. The world media says nothing, and this is why I hail this space where we people speak to each other when we have no power to access that machinery, which is exclusively at the service of the world hegemonic power and its satellites. The world media says nothing about the social protection system which exists in Venezuela, and which, with no distinction whatsoever, covers almost 19 million Venezuelan women and men. This model of inclusion, justice, and social protection has been set as an objective to be destroyed by the government of the United States of America. This is a real threat to its model of capitalist supremacy. The Bolivarian model is increase, in, intrinsically against the Monroe doct, doctrine and uh, tries to show the whole world uh, that we are nothing but the backyard of the United States of America. And in our extraordinary social programs, we highlight uh, the 2030 agenda as the path to be taken by this organization. In this house, of the international community. We develop shared cooperation mechanisms in order to deal with the urgent need to preserve the environment which has been affected by the devastating capitalist model. We express our solidarity to the kindred Caribbean people of Bahamas, a victim of the ravages of climate change. And as a country of the Amazon, we raise our voices against the barbarous commercialization of the Amazon, led by the president of Brazil, Jair Bolsonaro, who has uh, used 
his extremist ideology to attack our natural lung. We proclaim the rights of na nature as an essential banner of all nations. We also come to this organization to respond uh, to the urgent need to fight poverty and inequality. 26 individuals hold the same wealth as the 3.8 billion poorest people in the world. We agree with the Secretary General of this organization, Antonio Guterres, when he calls on nations to come here with specific actions and not with flowery speeches. And I would say not to come with lies and speeches, which are nothing uh, but uh, lies to the entire General Assembly. The point, dear Secretary General, is how to achieve these laudable commitments with an international community that has been seriously affected in its multilateral and legal structure. I wish to dwell in particular on the unilateral, coercive, uh, and illegal measures to which millions of people in the world are subjected. These measures are a use of force which is prohibited by the Charter of the United Nations and uh, international law, an attack on peace and security, and a massive violation of human rights. Between 2015 and 2019, the government of the United States adopted over 350 unilateral coercive measures against the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. These measures include the illicit uh, appropriation of all of our assets and wealth uh, outside the country, total financial and trade uh, blockade, which affects health, education, and uh, nutrition mostly focused on strangling the Venezuelan economy in order to bring our pe people to their knees. I have been asked to, to speak uh, slowly in order to facilitate interpretation. Greetings to the interpreters. I wish to share with this General Assembly terrifying data on the dimension of these uh, uni unilateral coercive measures as compared to conventional wars. It is well known that the use of armed force by the U.S. Uh, industrial military complex is a business. The last three presidents of the United States increased illegal bombings, thus uh, violating the Charter of the United Nations without any authorization from the Security Council. During the period between 2001 and 2009, President George Bush launched 70,000 bombs. This is an average of 24 a day. From the period of from between 2009 and 2017, under the leadership of President Barack Obama, the government of the United States launched 100,000 bombs a day, the average of 34. During the most recent mandate of Donald Trump, 44,096 uh, 44, bombs uh, were launched, which uh, broke the record with an average of 121 a day. Th these bombs have led to suffering of the civilian uh, population, indiscriminately affecting children, adults, and seniors. However, there is a new kind of terrorism, state terrorism, which hovers over states. It no longer calls for the use of bombs. It is uh, conducted by insurance companies with a press of a single digital button. The United States use the dominance of the, uses the dominance of the dollar as uh, the international reserve uh, currency. The Treasury Department is the economic pentagon, militarizing international relations and punishing millions of innocent people 
to enforce doctrines of regime change and to steal the resources of nations. The existence of these measures show that the international legal order has uh, disappeared. Venezuela has become the best evil experiment against multilateralism. Economic terrorism against Venezuela has caused a ninefold drop in its income. Between 2015 and 2018, the total losses for the Venezuelan economy reached $130 billion because of the brutal financial uh, blockade imposed by the United uh, States, uh, which is a shameless robbery of all our resources. But it's not simply confined to Venezuela. The supremacist hatred of the government of Donald Trump uh, has flexed its imperialist claws against our kindred uh, uh, re revolution in Cuba with a brutal uh, extension of these unilateral coercive measures. Cuba will never surrender. The Cuba of Fidel will never submit to any imperial pressure. Over five decades have gone by resisting the economic uh, blockade. What more do they need to become aware that this is never the way in which they will uh, defeat uh, the Marxist re revolution? They intend uh, to inflict the same fate on uh, Nicaragua. Three nations of this continent, three revolutions, the Marxist, uh, the Sandinista, and the Bolivarian revolutions are being opposed. This government judges us. It has thermometers uh, which don't even exist for themselves when it comes to measuring democracy, and yet they judge it. 400 people have more wealth in this country than 204 million, which is the creation of an oligarchy controlling the political life of the majorities, a society where a political system is dominated by a plutocratic minority it is not a democracy, and uh, much less does it have authority to impose its model on other nations. We call for less arrogance and more tolerance and coexistence with the other free nations of the world. We call on the United States for this. I want to stress a special relationship between the first producer of cocaine and the first consumer of the, this drug on the planet. And I'm referring to the narcotic relationship between Colombia and the United States. It is broadly documented that Colombia produces 70% of all cocaine being consumed in the world. It has increased its uh, production last in just last year by over 30%, uh, higher than any historic level of production. I'd like to remind the United States that it gave more than $10 billion for the Colombia plan to fight the, produc uh, the, the production of this uh, drug, uh, the scourge. The taxpayers in the United States, the vast majority, not the oligarchy, must feel that this is a waste of their tax money. Thanks to Commander Hugo Chavez and President Nicolas Maduro, we supported, uh, as a country, the peace agreements which received the blessing of this organization and uh, the world publicity machine. Today, in a single blow, President Ivan Duque is noisily celebrating the non-compliance with uh, these peace agreements. Since uh, the s signing of the peace agreements, the United Nations has uh, seen and reported the killing of 123 former combatants. 
in uh, just last year, uh, this uh, last year, over 700 uh, killings and, disapp uh, and forced disappearances of social leaders in our sister re Republic of Colombia have taken place. Just in Venezuela, there are almost six million Colombian brothers and sisters in exile, but this will never be mentioned uh, in uh, the mass media, which are at the service of the world hegemonic power. Two days ago, I'm stopping uh, for a moment here because, as I was saying just two days ago, the President of Colombia came before this worthy General Assembly to lie about Venezuela. And he brought a series of material which he said was evidence that in Venezuela we are harboring uh, Colombian irregulars. You've gotten to such a degree of lack of respect uh, that uh, he came to lie to the international community. It was a worldwide scandal in all the mass media. And uh, if you, a, a simple consideration will show that uh, these uh, photos which Mr. Ivan Duque brought and said were from Venezuela were actually taken on Colombian uh, territory in Cauca and Catatumbo, to be specific. It goes against any mechanism of mutual assistance between countries in the framework of conventions for police and legal, uh, reciprocal police and legal cooperation. What should uh, be taken is the diplomatic path. What should be done is that uh, countries uh, should have respectful means of uh, communication within the framework of uh, international legality. I want uh, Ms. Uh, President Duque to take note of this. He has forced us to come to the General Assembly with a specific uh, coordinates of camps where uh, people are being trained uh, to attack Venezuela, three areas in the northeast of your country, Ms. President Duque, Santa Marca, Marta, Rio Acha, and Marcao. I have the coordinates for Santa Marta, which will also be given to the Secretary General of this organization, 11 degrees, 14 minutes, 19 seconds to the north, 79 degrees, 6 minutes, and 15 seconds to the west. This is a camp in Santa Marta. Then there's a camp in Rio Acha. The coordinates are 11 degrees, 32 minutes, 3 seconds north, 75 degrees, 25 minutes, and 14 seconds west. Uh, the camp in Maikau, the coordinates are 11 degrees, 22 minutes, and 39 seconds north, 72 degrees, 13 minutes, and 58 seconds west. We will also deliver the photographs of these training camps for mercenaries to attack Venezuela. Venezuela has done what was needed. We went to, to international law. We offered the evidence to the government of Colombia. The Office of the Public uh, Prosecutor of Venezuela has also provided all of the evidence about the presence involved in major crimes against the Venezuelan constitutional order. The authors of terrorist acts uh, who attempted to assassinate the President of the Republic, President Nicolás Maduro. What was the official response of the government of Colombia? It was to give uh, asylum to these people who were uh, being sought by the uh, Venezuelan uh, se uh, security forces as an open violation of uh, resolution 1373 of the Security Council. It's a very bad joke, uh, but President Duque is also a bad liar. Not, uh, not even 48 uh, hours had passed. The truth came to light. Venezuela guarantees the integrity of its territory. We have never uh, allowed it to be used uh, to attack a brother country. I say this with full responsibility. 
The United States and its regional sat satellites from Colombia are preparing to attack Venezuela, putting the security and stability of this continent at risk. President Maduro was already warning in 2015 what was on the horizon when President Barack Obama adopted the infamous executive order considering Venezuela a threat to the national security and foreign policy of the United States. This uh, precedent was the starting point of the worst exercise ever conducted by the Organization of American States, so which uh, Venezuela is no longer a part of by approving the obsolete uh, treaty for reciprocal assistance, uh, creating the pillars to justify armed intervention in Venezuela, led by the United States and carried out by its satellite governments. Uh, of all of the mechanisms existing in this treaty, all have already been applied to Venezuela except for armed intervention. And this is why we have come to warn and uh, hopefully to prevent uh, this conflict that they wish to sow in our region. The action of many is not multilateralism. It is group unilateralism to escape uh, from the international rule of law. All you have to do is look at the history of the OAS to realize that uh, this uh, unilateral action of the group uh, ended up uh, converting it, uh, transforming it into one of the walking dead. In the current international situation, our organization, our shared house, is called upon to play a more proactive role in dealing with the issues that directly affect international peace and security. And I would say that one of the shameful instances is the question of Palestine. We are all in debt uh, to the heroic uh, people of Palestine for over 50 years. They have been denied their inalienable right uh, to free self-determination in a free, sovereign, independent state of Palestine with East Jerusalem as its capital. We also reject uh, any form of trade war against China. We find uh, the illicit uh, sanctions against Russia reprehensible. These are developing world powers, and they're building a new pluripolar um, and multicentric uh, world. We reject the sanctions against Iran, North Korea, Syria, Zimbabwe. Over 30 countries have been targeted by these uh, illegal criminal sanctions. We hail the election of Mexico to the presidency of Salak. They are the heirs of giants uh, like uh, Fidel Castro and Commander Hugo Chavez, who had the vision of rescuing our deepest uh, roots uh, of uh, our great motherland, our free motherland. We hail their presidency and we reject uh, any kind of offense uh, against the dignity of their people and their country's name. We ratify our historic rights over Guyana Esequiba, and we uh, stress uh, that the Geneva Agreement of uh, 1966 is the only valid instrument to settle this uh, territorial dispute, uh, which is uh, deposited uh, in the United Nations. In this major operation against Venezuela, which began with a coup d'etat in 2002 against President Hugo Chavez by the United States, supported by the same actors who today are attempting to overthrow our legitimate government, on the 23rd of January of this year, an uh, unprecedented event uh, took place in Venezuela a member of Congress who received less than 90,000 uh, votes uh, to, to Parliament, uh, went to a public uh, area and self-proclaimed himself president of Venezuela. This uh, member of Congress is an imperial puppet. He does not exist uh, in Venezuelan politics. 
he is a, a criminal element who has been introduced uh, to uh, breach the peace uh, in the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. This uh, self-proclamation was followed by recognition by a minority of governments of this unequal world, perhaps one of the worst uh, mistakes uh, in the diplomatic history of these countries. While the minority unequal world was, work, uh, was uh, working out the, this illegal conspiracy, the legitimate government of President Nicolás Maduro received the support of almost two-thirds of the members of the General Assembly of the United Nations in uh, the Nanaline movement. Exactly eight months have passed since uh, this unspeakable, twisted uh, stumbling block uh, on our historic uh, path. And the legitimate constitutional government, uh, with effective control over the territory and the in institutional mechanisms of the rule of law, is and will continue to be that of the president uh, which we Venezuelans gave ourselves, Nicolás Maduro, in the framework of the sacred right to self-determination. The majority of the world which supports Venezuela knows that this imperial artifice is also a criminal organization. An even more serious uh, criminal action uh, was uh, the coordination between uh, the imperial puppet, uh, Colombian paramilitary, and the government of Ivan Duque. You can see a photograph of this uh, self-proclaimed uh, uh, president as a head uh, uh, who is standing next to the head of a paramilitary organization, the Rastrojos. This shows you what we're facing. We're facing the uh, uh, use of paramilitary and criminal bands as tools to destabilize Venezuela. History knows enough about this. Our sister in Nicaragua knows about this, when the government of the United States used the Contras to overthrow uh, San, uh, Sandinism. The countries of the Middle East know this too. They have suffered uh, terrorist organization which were created, armed, and financed to overthrow governments that are not within the orbit of the world hegemonic power. In this vein, I wish to inform the international community that on Wednesday of this week, our ambassador to the International Criminal Court delivered a video which contains the confession, the full confession, of a head of uh, the paramilitary band, the Rastrojos. And uh, this has been um, uh, given uh, uh, to form part of the inquiry against Colombia because of paramilitary activity. President Maduro called together all sectors of uh, national life to sovereign dialogue to guarantee the peace and calm of the republic. Our commitment to the Constitution is unshakable. We have brought you the story to warn the world and the international community about these perverse mechanisms, these extra-legal mechanisms, which tomorrow, without any justification, can reach other countries which the world hegemonic power decides to change when it comes to the government and when they decide to actively steal the assets of a country. Venezuela is and will continue to be one and indivisible, the Venezuela of Bolivar, Bolivar and our liberators, which has never surrendered to any empire. The government of the United States has uh, uh, has uh, criminally supported uh, this uh, artificial building of a parallel government with, with the application of a full blockade. In 2014, the United States had imposed uh, 6,000 unilateral coercive measures on uh, dozens of countries throughout the world. Today, in 2019, the number has shot up to 8,000 unilateral coercive measures. These are the preferred weapon of domination in the 21st century. They're less costly, and uh, they're more profitable in neocolonial terms. Today, 32 countries suffer the economic aggression of the United States government. According to the Special Rapporteur 
of the United Nations on these measures. One third of humanity is suffering the consequences of this collective punishment. The non-aligned movement yesterday approved a declaration firmly rejecting the application of these illegal sanctions. This is the new economic terrorism using the suffering of the innocent civilian population to reap political benefits for the world hegemonic power and at the same time illegally obtains billions of dollars with just one tap of a digital button. I have brought two statements which were made last year and I will quote them. The first of them is a declaration of the Department of States of the United States. The pressure campaign against Venezuela is working. Financial sanctions uh, we imposed have forced the government to start uh, to fall into default, both uh, in sovereign debt uh, and in uh, the national oil country. What we're seeing is a complete economic collapse in uh, Venezuela. So our policy is working, our strategy is working, and we will keep at it. This is a criminal co a confession in flagrant violation of the Charter of the United Nations. The second statement comes from former Ambassador William Brownfield. We must deal with uh, this uh, as an agony, a tragedy, which will go on until it comes to an end. If there is, a, there is anything that we can do to speed it up, we must do it. But we must understand that this, this will have an impact on millions of people who are already having uh, a hard time finding food and medicine. We cannot do this and uh, pretend it will not have an impact. We must take a hard decision. Uh, this justifies the ends. And what is the end? To defeat the Bolivarian re re Revolution, to keep its hegemony all over the face of the earth. They attack Iran, Russia, China, the builders of a new world. It is a nefarious policy to apply the illegal, illicit doctrine of regime change. When it comes to these uh, serious allegations, Venezuela calls for investigation of all of the heinous violations of the Charter of the United Nations by the United States. These are crimes against humanity, against Venezuela and the entire world. What are the measures we should take in order to put a stop uh, to the abusive uh, actions of the government of the United States, which also leads to the suffering of, of its own people? President Trump, your people expect true commitment uh, to democracy and the eradication of poverty and inequality from its leaders. They expect not to be involved in any kind of war. The people of Walt Whitman is more like its poets and not like the arrogant supremacist prose that its government brazenly ex um, exhibits. The world expects a, an immediate course correction from the United States and that for once and for all they subject themselves to international law and respect and care for our shared home. Almost 75 uh, years after the fund foundation of the United Nations, we aspire to a vigorous and fettered organization able to put a break on the actions of the powers that be. Less uh, flowery speeches, yes, and more specific effective actions, to paraphrase the Secretary General. Let us have a common front to defend the Charter of the United Nations, its principles and purposes. The basis on, uh, of this organization's existence, this is the only way of guaranteeing the survival of the human race and the harmonious legal coexistence of the community of nations. I wish to conclude by reaffirming that Venezuela is at peace and will continue to be at peace. It is cared for by a dignified, brave people 
we deny, to, uh, we refuse to submit. We are the infinite legacy of the sword uh, left to us by our uh, liberating father, uh, uh, Simon Bolivar. With his spirit, we come to the world uh, never to make space for the Santander-like oligarchic betrayal of the free peoples of our great motherland. As the poet Benedetti said, let us defend happiness as if it were a trench, as if it were a principle, as if it were a flag, as if as as a right. With Bolivar, let us say, let us cast fear behind us and save our countries. Today we say, let us cast fear behind us and let us save the world from capitalist violence. Thank you very much. On behalf of the, of the General Assembly, I wish to thank the Vice President of the Bolivian Republic of Venezuela for the statement I just made and I request protocol to escort her, Excellency.